Well, hello, and welcome to LifeWave Connect. My name's Emily Hollingshead, and I'm the Vice President of North American Field Development and Relations, and I'm your host today. And I'm really excited for us to come together in our every other Wednesday meetings, our webinars, where we come together as a community and learn. Part of the things that we're really focused at here at LifeWave is ensuring that not only are you part of a community, but that you're continually being enriched with information, whether it's on the product, or on our amazing business. And today we are focused on business. And if you're new to LifeWave Connect, just wanted you to know that you can see this recording um, after the fact, whether you're navigating to our YouTube channel, you can also see it streamed live on our Facebook group, our Business Builder Facebook group. And we also provide a recording of all the languages that we support during these trends or during these sessions on our YouTube channel as well within one week of the original broadcast. Now, if you're looking for translation services right now, in our morning session, which is at 11 a.m. Pacific, we do provide translation services for our supported European languages. And in our evening session, which is at 6 p.m. Pacific, we provide translation services for Spanish, Chinese, and Japanese. Now you can access that simply by clicking on the globe at the bottom of your screen and selecting the language that you're looking for. Now, again, we're so excited that you're here with us, and we could not be more thrilled that you've decided to join our family and to connect with us here through LifeWave Connect. Now, as I mentioned before, we're all about learning and sharing, and on our business sessions of LifeWave Connect, it's all about learning so many different things that can help you to be successful as you share this amazing LifeWave technology and build the business that you want to build. Now today, we're gonna to be focused on sharing, but not only are we focusing on sharing, but we're gonna be talking about how do you share in an authentic way. And the reason that's so important is the people that you'll be sharing with, they already know you. And so if you start sharing in a way that's really not true to who you are, they'll feel that. So today we have a very special guest that's going to share with us some of her tips, tricks, and insights into how you can absolutely share in a way that's true to you, but also effective. And that's going to be the key takeaways today. So I'm really excited for you to be able to hear from our guest. And let me go ahead and introduce you to our guest and share a little bit about who she is, where she comes from, and why you're going to be so excited to hear what she has to say. So our guest today is one of our senior presidential directors out of California, Marcy Preble. But she was originally born and was raised in Oregon and actually attended university there and got her four-year degree in business. Following getting her degree, she got her first job in California, and she actually ran the Southern California Division of Sales for Purina, doing over $50 million a year in sales. Later on, Marcy's son was actually diagnosed with autism at the age of two, and because of this, she quit her job so she could focus on fighting for the rights, support, and recovery of children and families who were experiencing some of the same things she was as her son was through this diagnosis. But when her son was 12 and after he had recovered, she was actually looking for something to do and to put her passions towards something she could really get excited about. And that's when she discovered network marketing. Now, she's been in this space now for over 10 years as a professional networker, and she has been building her business since day one. In fact, she built her last business to over 12 million in sales a year. But while at that company, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and that really did take her out of things for a little while. But during her recovery, the patch found her, and she decided to join LifeWave because she wanted to share again. And within six months, she had reached the top of the company as senior presidential director and is currently doing over $17 million a year in sales with her team. So I know you're excited to hear from her. Marcy, are you here with us today? I am. Hello, Emily. So glad to be here. Oh, I'm so glad to have you, Marcy. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing with us. Uh, I, I'm sure everyone can hear from, from your resume that, oh my gosh, you have so much incredible experience. And I just, I'm excited for everyone to learn from you the things that you were taught by your mentor and by the people that you've partnered with in this business. It's going to be a really great call today. I think so too. I'm super excited to be here and be part of it with you too, Emily. Thank you for inviting me. 
Oh, of course. It's my pleasure. You know, we love on LifeWave Connect to always ensure that everyone comes away with some great information. And, and from my perspective, working with our top leaders really is such a great way to train and teach our people, give new insights. And so I really appreciate you sharing your time today and letting us know some of the things that you've developed over time that have helped you to share with authenticity. Yes, I'd be glad to. Well, speaking of sharing with authenticity, our topic today, if you're okay with it, Marcy, I'd really like to just kind of jump right in and start asking you some questions. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. So Marcy, you know, as we look at this topic, what does sharing with authenticity actually mean to you? And I'm sure it's different for everyone. Yeah, you know, I think to be authentic, it starts first with who you are, what's your core values. And that is who you are. And for me personally, I've been really doing a lot of work on that lately. And for me, my core values are, I I always want to be kind. I want to be in unity. And I want to be divinely inspired to co-create. And it's also really important is I want to have fun. (laughs) I want to play and have joy. Those are my core values. So when I share, I always in my heart, want to make sure, am I sharing from my own core values? And I would say to you, Emily, and for everyone, like get a piece of paper out right now and take a pen and write down what are your four core values right now? And then write down what do you want your core values to be? And do they match? Because once you understand who you are at soul, you will be able to be your most authentic self. And I think that's really, really important, Emily. No, oh, I think you're absolutely right. I think sometimes people don't necessarily take the time to really dive in and understand what do they value. And I really liked what you said, Marcy. What are they and what do you want them to be? Because sometimes that may not be the same thing, right? It may not be. And, and then you can work towards it. You're like, well, I'm this. Like for myself, I know I'm kind. I know I want unity. And I know that I want to divinely I want to use, um, I want to be divinely inspired to co-create. I think that's important. But at some point I lost my joy and, and I didn't know why. And so literally I wrote on my list again, this is what I want and this is what I am. And I realized, oh my gosh, I need to have fun. I need to add fun and joy because when I do that, then I'm going to be able to share this in a different way. And so I've made a conscious decision to have fun again and to have joy and to be bright and light wherever I walk. That is what for me. And so, yeah, I think it's important because sometimes we don't, we miss, we, 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 we have a miss. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think sometimes maybe the way we're acting isn't aligned with actually what we want to have be present in each moment. And then I think that's what you're saying is that to share authentically, not only do we have to know it, but we have to live it. Right. Right. And readjust. And readjust. And it's okay because here's the thing, Emily, we're all doing our best. We're all doing our best. And, you know, um, we can unconditionally love just because we can. And so that's what I'm, that's, that's just truth, right? Oh, I love that. I love that. You know, what I'm kind of hearing from you here is that it's important to reflect. It's important to be aware. And I think part of that is really having your mindset in a place where you're open to seeing maybe the disconnects or really just what matters most to you. And I think that really does play into what we're talking about here with authenticity. So what type of mindset do you think is needed to be able to share with an, with an authentic self to be authentic in every way or authenticity? Well, you know, it's funny you should say that because a lot of people always say to me, oh, this is network marketing. I can't sell. I'm not a good salesperson. I, I can't do this business because I'm not a salesperson. And let me tell you, You do not need to be a salesperson to be a network marketer. In fact, it can kind of have the opposite. And I'll give you a story if it's okay. Yeah, please. I came from Ralston Perina as a sales girl into network marketing. And I was a master at presentations and profits and and bottom line. And boy, I could give a good presentation. (laughs) And I took that technique into network marketing and I failed miserably. And I, I remember calling my mentor and I said, I don't know what I'm doing. And she said, well, we're not salespeople, Marcy. We're network marketers. I go, what does that mean? 
She goes, I'm going to tell you what it means. Number one, we are list makers. We create lists. We create lists from our phones. We create lists from Facebook. We create lists from Instagram. We create lists. And we move our lists from exposing lists to uh, follow-up lists to closing lists. And we're working our list. Every single contact moves to a person's name and phone number. And we are a master at lists. I didn't even know 10 years ago what that meant, what a list was. So she taught me that professional network marketers are list makers. Oh, then she tells me, we are of service. Oh, you mean we don't pushy sale? Mm -mm. We are of service. Our mindset is to be of service. Okay, I wrote that down. Then she says to me, our job is to educate. Oh. We educate. Yes, we educate. Okay, I can do that. My dad was a teacher. I can be an educator. And then she says, most importantly, you know what we do? I go, what? We listen. We listen. So if you are of service and you listen and you educate, you will be successful as you work your list. I'm like, oh. And from there, once I understood that I'm not a salesperson, I'm an education person and I'm a service, I got it. I can see how powerful it is to really understand your purpose, your focus, the how, but I think it's really shifting your mind, right? And that's what I think you're getting at is it's just having the clarity as to what your purpose is and why you're doing it, right? Absolutely. And when I realized that I'm just here educating and being of service. And it's not about me, it's me being of service to them. And they can decide if they want it or not. I'm not pushing anyone into anything. I'm educating and being of service. When my mindset shifted, then I could authentically share without attachment because attachment is the fear, right? Attachment is the fear. I am not attached if somebody wants something from me or not. I just want to do a good job giving the information. They get to decide. And I'm not hard on myself if they don't want it. You know, sometimes people go, oh my gosh, you know, uh, nobody came to the podcast. I invited 10 people. I said, you did not suck. You asked 10 people. You did your job. You were of service. Good job for you. Good job. Different. And that is a good job, right? It's it's continuing to offer, right? It's continuing yeah. to open your mouth. And I think that that's, that's so important. You know, you talked a little bit about your list and how you move through your list. And I really like what you had to say about that. I'd love it if you could kind of dive into a teeny bit more, like kind of shift a little bit of direction here. But yeah. if you could kind of give us some examples about use the word follow up, you use the word expose and close. How do you do that with, with authenticity? Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. Maybe I'll use you as my role play. Would that be okay? <laughs> we'll have fun. Okay, so so we do three calls in our business. We do an exposing call, or sometimes I call it an exposing gifting call because you can gift with a one to five day supply of X39, or you can gift with a 30 day money back guarantee. They're both wonderful gifts. So that's called the exposing slash gifting call. Then I have what we call the follow-up call and then the closing call. So I'm going to give you an example, a role play, how I do that being authentic, okay? And it starts for me with the list. So I am no different than anyone else. I mean, I'm just going to be totally honest. I go to Staples and buy a $5 college rule list book. This is my list book, right? And I have a list book and I have a notebook because I need both. And anyone on my team that's working with me, they all got their list book. I say, hey, do you got your list book? We're all like, we got our list book. And now they figured out how to make their list book even better than mine, which is awesome. So there's my list book. There's my list. You can see I got names and numbers on my list. So what am I going to do? I'm going to call. I'm going to call. I'm going to text. I'm going to voice memo. They're all great. The one thing I like to do, Emily, is I like to do a talk and text, text and talk. So if I'm going to call, I'm also going to text because people may listen to a message, but not call you back, but everybody responds to a text or a voice memo. So, but I also like the touch of a real, a real message or a real conversation. So what do I do? It's called, you ready? Question bridge question. What's the first question I ask? Let's just say I'm calling Emily up. I call her up and I say, Emily, what's going on with you? 
And then I listen. I ask three questions to you. Emily, what, what are you doing these days for fun? What are you doing these days for work? How's your health? Three, and then I listen. And what I'm listening for, Emily, is five things. There are five desires. I'm listening to where their health is. They're either healthy and they want to stay healthy or they're sick and they want to get healthy. I listen to where they are. They either, they, they're entrepreneurial. They want to make money. They're working a whole lot of hours at something they don't love. I'm looking at time freedom. Do they have time to do what they want anymore? I'm looking at community. People are really lonely right now. We have disconnected over the last two years and people are lonely. And I look at giving back. What are people's acts of service? Those are the five desires. Most people are always two out of the five. They are health and they are something else. So what I do once I find out what that is by asking questions, and that's why I like those three questions once again, what are you doing for fun? What are you doing for work? How's your health? People want to talk. 10 years ago, I call and people wouldn't pick up right now because people are so lonely. People are picking up. I have a lady the other day. I called the wrong person, Emily. I called the wrong person. I had talked to her for 10 years. I said, this is Marcy. Oh my gosh, I'm calling the wrong person. And she goes, Marcy from across the street. I go, no, this is Marcy from 10 years ago. Hi. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know who you are. Right. So what have you been doing, lady? What have you been doing for fun? <laughs> what are you doing for work? How's your health? I ended up sending her a gift, right? And I learned out she's in a woman empowerment group. And I learned that she has stuff going on with inflammation in her fingers. Like I asked the questions and it didn't matter that I called the wrong person, <laughs> right? I'm just being totally honest, right? So then from there, you say, well, I finally found something that helps me with that energy level. And there's a great business. You can work four hours a week from home. What do you know about stem cells? So it's called a question bridge question. And then from there, I send a small testimony or a talk, a small testimonial about my, maybe 20 seconds, short. You don't need it to be a book. It can't be, it has to be short. And then I send a link. And then I say, text me your information. I'd be happy to send you a gift. And if they text me their address, I send them a five-day supply of X39, but they have to pre-qualify by sending me an address because otherwise I'm wasting my gift. And that is what I call the exposing or gifting call, talking to someone in an authentic way and listening. Does that make sense? It does. I love that. Those three questions are really powerful. They and are. Clean. Like everyone's wanting to connect and talk with what a perfect way to approach connecting. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. So then we take it to the follow-up call. And I usually like to follow up authentically as the person's getting the gift. If you're gifty. Now, if you do the 30 day money back guarantee, you're not going to follow up with, did you get the gift? You're going to follow up with, did you watch the link? Right? It's fine. It's the same. Okay. So don't get hung up on that. So, but the follow-up call is the call where you're calling and you're doing something like, this is really fun. Did you get it? <laughs> Did you put it on? Oh, it's in the drawer on the kitchen table. Oh, well, go get it. Let's put it on together. And I'm literally then explaining like a minute of the technology. I'll say something like, well, the X39, it, it activates your own stem cells using our wearable patented light technology. Stem cells are the only cells in your body that are changeable. They can change into any cell your body needs for repair, just like when you were 20. Did you have gray hair when you were 20? No. Did you have wrinkles when you were 20? No. Did you have that low energy when you were 20? No. What if I could activate your dormant stem cells again and get the army marching? Would you put your patch on? Yes, I will. And they're ripping to get their patch on. We're 12 hours on to activate and repair and 12 hours off. And honestly, I just read the little script on my business card. I just made it a script. And because professional network marketers, we're just script people, right? And so that's my script. And what's beautiful about that is from there, I say, but you're still wearing the patch. So enjoy it. Because if, if you follow up after they've already worn the patch, then you've lost it. You've got to follow up as they're getting it and wearing it. And where we mess up usually is we follow up. We don't follow up at all. Or we follow up like six months later and they do the full on, I didn't feel anything. And that stumbles everyone. But if you follow up with feel, felt, found, I know how you feel. I felt the same way. And then I found on the, I don't feel anything. You do this. 
I know how you feel. I felt the same way. And then I found that this X39 activates your dormant stem cells. They can turn into whatever cell your body needs for repair. And they're marching and they're going to go fix whatever you need first. And you may not feel that. And then it's going to go fix what you need to feel. And then I take it to, and that's why we have a 30 day money back guarantee, no risk. Let's do your silver kit. Like it's, it's how you handle the objection, Emily. Um, people say that when you, when people have an objection or a question, they're really interested. It's like the blank stare or the nothing. So don't be afraid of an objection is what I'm trying to say. It means they're interested. You just handle it with what I call feel felt found. And so then I'll, I'll offer them a few links. Like, well, let me send you a testimonial of my friend that has some energy uh, issues and I'll find a testimonial. Or would you like to come to a 30 minute podcast so you can learn more and I'll send them to that. Or let me send you a one page of all the products because you may like a few other ones in addition to X39. And let me send you a link to our price list. And then they'll tell me what they want. And once again, I'm of service. I'm not going to send them all those things if they don't want it. I'll send them what they want. I'm not selling them. I'm of service. And then I send it to them. And then I will say to them, but, you know, enjoy your journey. But we do have that silver kit. Of course, I'm going to go and see if they want to order it. Because here's the thing. You always want to ask to be of service. Because if you ask, it's 50% yes. If you don't ask, it's 100% no right? Oh, man. I love no. that, Marcy. You're right. So right. So just ask. And if they say no, then you say no problem. Just I'm going to send you the links. And then a network marketer always schedules the next meeting. So let me schedule Friday. You'll be on your last patch and I'll answer your questions and be of service. So when you call on Friday, what are you going to do? You're going to say, hey, you're on your last patch. Did you look at the links I sent you? And this is what they say. Did you look at your testimonial of my friend who had the energy issues? Because you're asking what their issue is. So you send them the right thing authentically of service. I did. It was amazing. Did you go to the podcast? Oh, I didn't have time. Never make them feel guilty. Oh, no problem. Did you ever look at the other products? The one page. I did. I had a couple other ones that look great. Well, why don't we take a look at the pricing? And I literally have a pricing form that I have printed out and I, and I just go over retail preferred and I like the silver kit. And I explain how we could fill the silver kit with four different sleeves for $2.99. And then of course, go on one X39 the following month to keep your stem cells activating. And then I shut up because the first one that talks is the one that is gonna go with. So I shut up. And 80% of the time, they just say yes. And I say your address is. And so that is the from the exposing or gifting call to the follow-up call to the closing call. And here's the beautiful thing, Emily. We always talk about being of service and of love. So when you water someone with love one to four times, guess what you close up? I don't know. 10%. 10%. When you water on the fifth time, what do you close out? Mm, 20? 80%. 80, wow. <laughs> right, but let me tell you about the watering. I've been doing the work on this. So here we go, you ready? I'm ready. The exposing gifting call is your first watering. Okay. You send the gift. Guess what watering that is? Two. Yep. The third watering is your follow-up call. What gift is that? What is that? Number three. Yeah, you send the links. What watering is that? Number four. The fifth, the closing call. What number is that? Number five. Aha! Ah, 80%. 80%. <laughs> the reason we don't convert at 80% is because we do not do the five waterings. The reason we don't do them, Emily, it's not that we don't want to. It's just that it's so uncomfortable. We would rather not do the work that's easy than be. Um, uncomfortable. What do I mean by that? Even me, I'm a senior presidential director. I have this woman on my list. I'm, it's embarrassing to say for three months, three months. Did I call her? No, because I kept thinking I'm going to go do laundry instead, because that's a lot more comfortable than picking up the phone. So how can we make the uncomfortable comfortable? Because the work is easy, but why aren't we doing it? 
I don't know. Why aren't we doing it? Because it's so darn uncomfortable. Yep. How so do we make it? Be- not, how do we make it un- uncomfortable? Not comfortable? How do we switch that? We do it together. Okay. Okay. So that's my new thought is that we do it together. We now work three days together. Our team as a team, we work and we do the uncomfortable and make it comfortable together. We had like 82 people today on our zoom in our office doing a work for an hour and we just do the uncomfortable and make it comfortable. And I will tell you this, that, you know, why I, I started this, you know, why? Yeah. Because I didn't want to be alone anymore. Ah. Uh. I did not want to be alone anymore. I wanted to do the work with folks because I wanted to make the uncomfortable comfortable for myself. And the best way to do it is do it together. So we separate now training from the work. We train and then we do the work together. And I'm telling you what's what's interesting from a network marketing perspective, and I've really researched this a lot, is that during, you know, when we were down for two years, Network marketing companies either learned Zoom and excelled or they failed because they could not translate what we call belly to belly, which is touching, personal touch, to how to build a team without it. And so they didn't. What was beautiful is that our teams really, and I'm really proud of all the teams, the teams learned how to navigate Zoom and we learned how to build community through Zoom. And now we're utilizing and leveraging Zoom to work together. We're making the, the, the gifting exposing call together. We're making the follow-up calls together. We're making the closing calls together. We're doing the work together and I'm having fun again. So that's kind of where we're headed. Oh, I love that. I love that you have figured out a way to make those important daily activities, those focused actions less scary, you know, by doing it together. And I think that's part of you being authentic to how you share, right? You mentioned at the very beginning that you wanted to have fun. You wanted there to be joy, right? And this is a way that you're ensuring that that is a part of your core value in every action. And you're helping your team with that same thing. I love that. It's true. That's what I wanted for myself, you know, and I'll say I I, I have another interesting example because we didn't really talk about this, if I may, but please, and we're skipping around a little bit, but I also want you guys to understand that there's also a way to, to talk to people, touching people again, belly to belly, because um, we're, we're out again, right? And I, I really want you guys to understand that I was talking about the list and how you how you do question bridge question on the list, but how do you build the list out is a really important thing to talk about and how do you do it authentically? And of course, you look at your phone, you look at Instagram, Facebook, Messenger. In my phone, I actually put people in my phone for the last 10 years, Emily, their name, their first name, last name, how I met them, like under company, I'll say um, how I met them through who, what they do. They may be a massage therapist. They may work for another network marketing company and the state they live in. So I can do lists of massage therapists in my own phone. I can do lists of um, of um, uh, people who live in you know, Sacramento, right? Or people that live in Orange County, or I can do lists of people that were in a different network marketing company that I worked with. Like I can, I, my phone becomes my tool. And then all the other things, whether it's Messenger or Facebook, you know, people commented on something I did in Facebook. And one of the women in the comments said, what's your new gig, Marcy? Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to message her and I'm going to send a link. And then I'm going to, I'm going to ask for her phone number. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put her in my list. So in addition, you can do this, what I call belly to belly, which is touching one another, right? And that's an open market. And you can do that by yourself or you can go belly to belly in teams of two because double energy is lovely, but either way, and I'm going to explain the most important thing you can do. Okay. It's really, really hard to remember this. It's kindergarten. You ready? Ready. Hi, Emily. My name's Marcy. What's your name? Oh, no, you don't. I don't know your name. Hold on. Just a minute. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> Cut, redo. Hi, my name's Marcy. What's your name? Hi, I'm Emily. Nice to meet you, Marcy. It's nice to meet you, too. So what do you do for work? Oh, I work for this awesome stem cell technology company. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. What do you do for fun? Oh, I love to go hiking. <gasps> 
Oh, I love the outdoors too. How wonderful for you. Yeah, well, I see that you got a little brace on your knee. What's going on with that? Uh, you know, I, I did this tough hike a couple weeks ago and it's just been bugging me ever since. Wow, well, you know, it's interesting. I, I, got, I got a technology that you may or may not be interested in. Let me give you my card and oh my I'll reach out to you. Do you have a card for me or, or anything? And oh, yeah, sure. One. Yeah, I have one right here too. Okay, great. I'll, I'll reach back to you. Okay, honey, it's so nice talking to you. Nice so, talking to you too. <laughs> so what I did on that is I, and you can also do a compliment as well. You can be standing in line in Starbucks and I could say something like, oh my gosh, your dress is beautiful. My name's Marcy. What's your name? Like it's a, a compliment and an introduction is really lovely too. And then what you do when you exchange cards, that's why I went and I got like, I made like, I'm going to, Leah, I, I, Leah does the, the, the younger square cards and I duplicated her because it's so cool. So I made a really professional looking card. And what happens with that is when you have a professional card that you hand and they hand you a card back, you're like business people now. And, 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 or you can give a card and get a phone number. Remember you're, you, you, you can't just give them something without you getting something back. If you don't get their name and number, you won't be able to follow up. So you must build the list. So do not be afraid to ask for the card or ask for their phone number. And then you take a picture of their card so you don't um, lose it. And I'll give you an example of this because it happened on the airplane back from Florida. And I have to be honest with you. I mean, I was tired. Like we were in a big trip. We were in meetings all week. and. I was literally going to sit in my airplane chair and not talk to anybody. I'm just being honest. That's where I was at. <laughs> and then there was this woman sitting next to me and she was the cutest blonde ever. And every time she had to go to the bathroom on the airplane, I had to go. And I kept following her every time, every time, every time. And pretty soon it just got to be ridiculous. Right. And so she, and we're sitting next to her. So finally I go, hi, my name's Marcy. What's your name? We've been following each other to the bathroom for the last five hours. And she goes, I know we have. My name is so-and-so. And then I said, when do you do for work? I'm a real estate agent with Sotheby's. That's a huge real estate office in LA. Oh my gosh, really? What do you do for fun? My husband and I are looking to move to Florida. We're, we're checking out property right now. Wow, that's really cool. Then she says, what do you do? I'm in the stem cell activation technology. Wow. At this point, I'm not even kidding you, Emily. I have not one patch left. I have given all patches away in the week. I don't even have one, but I have a business card. I said, let me give you my card. And then I can, um, we can connect later. And I was going to ask her for her card, of course. But as I was doing it, she grabs in her purse and hands me her card. I said, thank you. And we exchanged. And I took a picture of it. And then guess where she is? She's on. She's on your list. Your list. Sure. So that is that is a, a great way to just be authentically you as you're loving people and enjoying meeting people with with really no agenda other than be nice, right? Oh, I love that. What a perfect example. That just happened. <laughs> that. That's my favorite. When I talk with leaders like yourselves, uh, like yourself, you're also doing the action in your everyday, even though you were tired and you probably didn't really want to, you still did it. I love I did. that. I'm so proud of you. That's so I, awesome. You really, you really can't stop. It's a problem. <laughs> Well, it's like you said, you have specific things that you want to do, like they're your core values and you want to help people, right? And so I can see why it just started to come out because that's part of who you are and you're clear on what your intentions are. I love that. Yes. Well, we're pretty much out of time, Marcy, but I think I just wanted to ask you one final question. Because you are one of our top level leaders, you do have a lot of people that you get to work with on your team. And so I would say from a leadership perspective, I'm curious how do you build and move a team with love and support and really shine in with your authenticity? You know, I have worked really hard for the last three years to create a backbone and systems for anyone to tap into. And it is an open system, which means that anybody can use it. I don't pass code protect. I don't do anything like that. It's just there to be of service for anybody that wants it. And, um, and I'm really proud of that. And so 
once again, you know, we as leaders, everybody's, you know, training their teams and building whatever they think is best. And I'm definitely all about like everybody picking and choosing what's best for them or creating what's best for them. But I, I really have tried hard to, to have a system in place that anyone can use, right? It's open. And so I just, that has been one thing that I, I am a creator and I'm good at creating systems. And I'm proud that many people are finding benefit in using what, what is there for them. Um, and number two would be that I'm really wanting to lock arms with the people in my organization that want to work with me, that just want to do the work. I mean, the work is uncomfortable, but it's easy. And so that's what we do now. We do office Zooms three hours a week, one hour. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays from 11 to 12 Pacific. And there's a group of us that just all come to work together. And then we train on the work Tuesdays from 10 to 11 Pacific. So I have split the training and the working because what we were doing a couple of years ago that didn't work is we were trying to do this. It's really working together and being accountability partners for like 80 of us, right? But what we did wrong before is we were doing the training and the working at the same time and it doesn't work. You can't do it. You can't train and work at the same time. So somehow like it just came to me, like we got to train separate and do the work. So we train separate on the, the money-making activities, which I train today. You know, really we train in chunks, the gifting exposing call, the follow-up call and the closing call. We chain each chunk and then we go to work three hours a week and do the work together, whoever wants to do it. And we do it together. So we're not alone. And so then we literally mute our our Zoom and we're on our phone working. And then we chat to each other. Hey, I need you for this. Can you do a three-way for this? Hey, can you, um, uh, I have a question. I'll, they'll private message me. And I'm, Peter and I are like working our best to hold the container for the team to, to help because it's like, it's kind of like being on, on the job. Uh, what is it? On the job training? Kind of yeah. like yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, for other teams that are listening, I find that is working really well. And the reason it works and why it never worked years before is because we didn't understand how Zoom worked. We were trying to talk leverage, leverage your time, leverage your work, leverage, but we didn't see it ever because we were belly to belly. So the most you could see is maybe 20 or 30 people, but you didn't have all 30 working together. Now, honestly, Emily, we have, we today had 82 people either doing gifting calls, follow-up calls or closing calls. They're all doing their own thing because they're trained on it now. And so think about this leverage. I mean, we're actually working the B quadrant, right? Have you ever heard of Robert Kiyosaki, the four quadrants, the B quadrant is the business quadrant. So let me ask you this. If, 80 people do three exposures. How many exposures is that in? A lot. 80 <laughs> times three, I can't even do the numbers, right? <laughs> so if 80 people work one hour, how many hours are we really working together? Well, 80. A lot, a lot. yeah, 80 hours in 80 one hour. hours in one hour. And so what's beautiful about this concept is we are actually all experiencing what we've all talked about, which is leverage. And isn't that what we're trying to do? Work less, leverage each other, and build residual incomes where we can be free. Like that is truth. And that is the beauty of network marketing, but we're actually showing it to be true. And so in, if any leaders are watching this, like try it with your teams because it works. And it's really, really beautiful. So there. Oh, Marcy, I love what you've had to share today. You know, I know that there are so many people in our community that are so heart-centered, servant leaders, want to help, just want to serve. And I think sometimes just taking the time to really understand not only how do we become clear about what we're trying to achieve, but how do we follow the correct tasks that'll help us to be successful in a way that's true to us. I really appreciate you helping connect those dots today and sharing what's worked for you and your team. I hope everyone was able to really, really hear what you were saying. So you shared so many amazing things with us today. Thank you. No, thank you for having me. It's my honor to be asked. Oh, well, we really appreciate it. And I know that everyone really learned a lot from it today. So thank you, Marcy. You're welcome. And to everyone that's here on our LifeWave Connect today, thank you for sharing your time with us, for plugging into the resources that are here for you. Let's go ahead and do a, a giveaway at the end of the, this uh, session like we like to do. Go ahead and look at the comments section right now for the training at LifeWave email. They will be doing a randomizer. We're gonna see the name in just a second here. 
Okay, so you see your name there listed by our training email. Go ahead and email into sales at lifewave.com and we'll send you a free sleeve of X39. Anytime you're part of one of our connection points, one of our webinars, we'd love to give away products because we appreciate you being a part of our community. We know that you're sacrificing your time and we hope that not only will you have fun being here with us together, fun like Marcy's looking for in her life, but we really hope that this is a space where you can come away every time with something new that's going to help you to be even more successful as you work towards achieving your goals and dreams and you build the business that we know that you have the ability to do within yourself. So thank you again. Again, look for that from training at lifewave.com and email us at sales at lifewave.com. Congratulations to our product winner. You guys have a great day. Thank you again for being here and we'll see you on the next LifeWave Connect. We'll be focused on product. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.